After shooting the next bite for the last 16 years, still one of the best places we go to ice fish is Lake of the Woods. So Gary, Chase, and I have decided to come to uh, Adrian's here at Lake of the Woods and give ourselves a little Christmas present, I'll call it. We're gonna go out and just try and catch a bunch of fish. Now, we run into a little bit of an issue up here with the weather, it's actually sub-zero with wind chills down in the minus 20 to minus 30 degrees, so really, really cold. The good news is we'll be sitting in our nice warm thermal clam shelters the second piece of good news is that our good friends at Adrian said the fish are still biting. So we're going to go out and try and whack a few wallies and saugers. We're going to be using conventional stuff like spoons and maybe our snare rods. We're also going to spend some time, I think, trying to figure out how to get shiver minnows to work up here. So we're going to go out on the water. We're going to do some jigging. We're going to try and keep warm. And we're going to show you the next bite. Just looking for the next bite, next bite, next bite, next bite. Just looking for the next bite. And I tell you what, the monsters are in here. Oh, this is a popular fishing area with all these lakes around here. The next bite. <laughs> <laughs> the next bite. Lake of the Woods is a lake that generally has fishable ice early in the year. The lake freezes early because it lies so far north, and if there is an early snowfall, the lake is so large, most of that snow blows off the lake. So without insulating snow cover and really cold temperatures, the ice is able to build much faster than most smaller lakes. The best part about this early ice opportunity is the insane numbers of both walleye and sauger that reside throughout the system. There's one. Oh. <laughs> Whack. With the dark stained water, the fish tend to bite nearly all day, making it possible to catch more walleye and sauger than almost anywhere else in the northern part of the United States. That's the other species you'll catch up here is the walleye's cousin called the sauger. You can kind of tell it. You can see all the black dots on its fin up here. A little bit more brownish looking fish, but it's actually a pretty decent one right there. I think I might actually eat that one. <laughs> So Lake of the Woods offers a very unique situation for early ice. The areas that you're gonna wanna focus in on are gonna be like four mile bay area. So it's kind of a big basin. There's a couple current areas in there. So be careful if you're gonna start going close to the river, but also you can go across Pine Island where the gap is for those of you that fish in open water out here a lot and go out actually into the basin of Lake of the Woods. These fish are all starting to come down to the Southern end here. So really pay attention to the conditions, but these basin fish are moving along. Lot. So don't be afraid to hop around. You're basically looking to find an active pod, just like you would be if you were pulling planer boards in the summer. But Lake of the Woods, you can get out in this early ice. And of course, there's some big fish here, but more importantly, there's a lot of fish. So you can always get home with a good meal. There's one. Oh, he hit right away. <laughs> yeah, he's not too bad a one. He barely marked on the graph he came so fast and he just wailed it. So it is sometimes. He's not too bad a fish. Oh, there's a leader. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a nice fat one. Woo! <laughs> and he wasn't going to get off. He uh, decided he wanted to bite and he wasn't fooling around. Wow. Yeah. There's a nice uh, Lake of the Woods fish right there very nice well buddy it's your lucky day you get to go back uh, here you go buddy and away he goes <laughs> the next bite is brought to you by mercury marine go boldly tracker boats fish the finest bass pro shops and cabela's your adventure starts here berkeley catch more fish and power pole total boat control Five. 
closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Precision Trolling Data, the authority for crankbait diving depth information. I want to take a second and talk about your line setup for ice fishing, especially your jigging rod. Uh, I normally will use a fluorocarbon leader, like you see here, going directly to the spoon, and then I'll go to about a size 10 to 12 barrel swivel, and then I'll attach it to the main line. Today I'm using 10 pound test fluorocarbon for my main line. Sometimes I use Fireline Ultra 8. It's a very thin, slippery line, extremely strong. Often, it's hard to tie a polymer knot if you already have a leader started like I do here. So the knot of choice for me is an improved cinch. You just basically go through the end of the barrel swivel, you make a loop and you hold it, and then you go five twists. Take the tag end and go through the loop that you've been holding with your fingers, and then you'll take that tag end and go through the loop again. So you basically cinch it up tight. I pull on the tag end too, make sure it's nice and tight, and then I'll take a scissors and I'll snip it short. If you're using Fireline Ultra 8, that line is quite a bit more slippery and it's very fine in diameter. So instead of five twists, go to anywhere from eight to 10 twists and it'll work very, very well. And it, pretty much close to being as strong as a polymer. So uh, that's the nice setup for attaching your barrel swivels or anytime you need to uh, you have a difficulty in tying a polymer because it's hard to, to loop the lure through the end of it. There's one! Oh, did he hammer it! <laughs> just that slow drop down and he just absolutely pounded it. <laughs> I mean, thump, he hit it. There's my swivel. I only got about two feet to success here. <laughs> Should be getting pretty close to the hole here. There he is. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and he's happy to see me. Look at that one. He's going to be a hair big for the uh, slot limit here on Lake of the Woods, 19 and a half inches. But that's all right. I, was, I popped up that shiver minnow. I just was slowly letting it down and whoo. <laughs> he just rattled it. And that's the way when, when you get these fish fired up on that shiver minnow, that's the way they are. They just really mad at it almost. So very cool. Well, I'm going to get him back before he gets too cold. What a great fish. Get this bad girl. I think it's a girl down in here. You fought hard enough. You'll probably go good, won't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Total Control, presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from Total Boat Control. Well, this is the last time in 2019 that I'm gonna be taking out the Nitro ZV20 out of the water. I mean, it's been a really fun year. This thing's been a prototype boat that I've run all season long in the tournaments, through TV shows. So I've put it through its paces and I've come away extremely impressed. 20 foot, two inches in length. You're talking about a 2,900 pound hull. So it's gonna beat down the waves just like the ZV21 did in the past. You can put trim tabs on it. They're going to be coming with the Mercury 4-stroke Pro XS. So it's very high performance. It's got a nice growl to it. Sounds great. But the thing that I really liked about this motor and this boat package is the fuel economy that you get out of it. I mean, I can put almost 60 gallons of gas in this ZV20 and I'm getting very good fuel economy with the Pro XS. So the performance is just fantastic. The range that you can go on one tank, absolutely incredible. There's nothing else like it in the class. But when you go into basically the, the attributes that we put into the boat, you see that we can have track systems now. So you're looking at the console, you can still put two big units next to each other. Uh, you go to the front of the boat, everything's flush up front, tons of storage. You still have rail mount situations. The 20 is not just for a serious tournament angler. It's great for that, but also we put some family features in. We did put a ski pylon with support on the back deck. We put a seat base basically on the back deck where you can sit and do some fishing as well too. So if you're in the market for a 20 foot boat, and a lot of times it might be because a 21 footer didn't fit in your garage in the past. Tournament angler features, family features, and overall just a great, great boat for the north.
the plummeting double-digit sub-zero temperatures and negative 26-degree wind chill isn't stopping Keith, Chase, or Gary from exploring the early ice of Lake of the Woods. When I smile, my teeth hurt. <laughs> Neither is it slowing down the walleyes as well, prowling beneath a foot of solid ice. It's a numbers game and climbing fast. One of the things about ice fishing is, is activity is good. We've had great action here at Lake of the Woods. In fact, I'm going to show you here what I do. I keep this little bead thing here, slide it down for every fish. So you can see I got uh, 19 on there. The good thing is, this is the second time through that string. So it's actually fish number 49. Oh, there he is. Uh, I think she feels like an okay one. It's going to be a good eater. Oh, looks like he's hooked on. There he is. Oh, yeah. Decent walleye. <laughs> Look at that. That oh, was just cool. I mean, I could see him on the edge of the cone, just barely on the bottom, and I started lifting the shiver minnow. And as soon as I started lifting it, it became a lot of yellow on the graph, and he just blasted it. So one of the best lures we've had out here is the shiver minnow. A couple different sizes that we're using, we're actually using the number one and the number two, a little bit bigger size number two there. Uh, as far as colors, it seems like something like gold like this. You know, a chemo's catcher is actually gold with a little bit of orange belly. Or one that's totally different is something like uh, bloody nose. It's got a lot of white in it. Um, when you're actually using the shiver minnow, one little tip I can give you is you'll notice that I've got the knot on the top of the, the little ring there. If you just simply slide that knot all the way to the back, you'll find that that shiver minnow actually lays with its nose down a little bit. And that'll actually help with the glide and it actually seems to trigger a few more fish. Now as far as tipping the shiver minnow, you start with a whole minnow. I go through the top of the head because it's a little bit tougher, but then I actually pinch it off so there's about three quarters of an inch of minnow there. Make sure you squeeze it a little too because that'll actually break the little air bladder in there and make that thing hang a little bit nicer down there. Now, as far as cadences, we're actually using a couple different cadences. I would call the one that Chase is using kind of the more conventional one. That is, maybe you start with the bait on the bottom, you give it a good hard snap, and you let's just run right back down to the bottom. Basically trying to draw that fish in. But don't hesitate also to, just to reel up a little, maybe a foot or so off the bottom, and do the same kind of thing. Sometimes that'll draw them in. Now once they're drawn in, then you actually got to get them to bite. And the way you do that is just start shaking that bait and lifting. Lift it a little bit and then pause. And when it pauses, a lot of times that fish will run up and grab it. If it runs up but doesn't grab it, shake it a little more and lift it a little higher. See if you can get them up to actually bite that bait. Sometimes you'll end up five, six feet off the bottom. Now the cadence I'm using is a little bit different in that I'm actually running that bait to the bottom. What I'm doing is giving that same hard pull so that shiver minnow jumps out to the side. But then instead of letting it crash to the bottom or return to its same spot, what I'm doing is keeping my rod up just a hair high and then I'm catching it. It's coming back, it's stopping, I'm catching it, and then I slowly drop it back down to the bottom. And what's interesting, I think, is sometimes that jump out and glide back draws them in, and then when they see it slowly dropping like that, they come up and bite it, thunk, a nice hard tick bite. So it's a really great bite. So a couple different sizes of shiver minnows, a couple different colors, a couple different cadences. Mix them all up, and you're gonna catch some fish at Lake of the Woods. Oh, is he fighting good. He's just pounding down there. It's not that deep of water here, only 10, 11 feet of water, but there he comes. Ah, there's a good one. I knew he was going to be a better one. Look at that thing. <laughs> and I just, I rip it up and then I just slowly cruise it down and whoop, he just hit it. That is a nice fish. Holy smokes, that's a gorgeous Lake of the Woods walleye there. Can't keep them out too long today though, because it is frigid out. <laughs> but the fishing's hot, the fishing's hot. All right, let's see if you want to get down and boogie, huh? Yep. <laughs> the next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Precision trolling data, the authority in diving depth info. Strike King, a legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, total boat control.
exciting information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. To have a great day out on the water, boating or fishing, really starts at the boat ramp. When you're starting to get ready, make sure you pull off into some prep area lane or, or just stay out in the parking lot and get as much done as you can. Things you want to look at is first of all your transom. Get that motor bar off. Get that plug in the boat. Make sure it's in there good and solid. Take the straps off the back. And then the other thing is, is just make sure that you trim all your engines up. Maybe you had one of them down for uh, towing. So that transom is all ready. Maybe you'll go up to the bow and unhook one of the, the like the safety strap up there. Make sure you get all your gear in the boat. You know, get your rain suit, your life jackets, your sunscreen, your phone. The other thing I like to do is right away tie up my bow line so that that's all ready to go. One of the little tricks I can give you is no matter what kind of ramp you're going into, I always try to pull into it in a way where you can get your truck and your boat nice and lined up so it's going to be a straight shot backing back in. Now, if you haven't done a lot of backing in a ramp situation, go out and practice in some parking lot at a school or right in the boat ramp parking lot. Now, as you start to back up, it's better to just take your time and kind of inch down to the ramp. So just take your time backing up as straight as you can, nice and parallel with that dock that's down there. A lot of times you'll want to stop a little short while you can still walk back and unhitch that final strap. Maybe you trim down your engine and get it started. Then it's time to slide that boat off. Now, if you've got two people, that's real easy. Put one in the boat, one in the truck, slide it off, and then that second person can just back away until you come back down from parking the truck. If there's only one of you, then what you want to do is hook up that bow line, back up so that the boat just slides off a little, then again go up and park your truck. Now if you're going up by yourself and parking your truck, don't be good stopping at the restroom or anything like that. Get back down to the boat, hop in the boat and get out of the way. So you're trying to get out of the way off that ramp as quick as you can so other people can use it. Being at the boat ramp can be a kind of a frustrating or a nervous situation, but if you take a few simple steps, you'll not only have an enjoyable time at the ramp, but everybody else will too. Regardless of the fact that the air temperature is dangerously frigid. This is a early ice lake of the woods. We have tough conditions going on here with really cold weather, you know, 20 below wind chills, 30 below wind chills. Lake of the Woods still presents a strong walleye bite based on sheer numbers alone. You know, a lot of fish this size, quite a few smaller, some bigger. The place has got a lot of fish. I like it where you don't have to go out very far and the bite's good. So while it might be tempting to stay huddled over your heater in the ice shack, staying mobile is still a major part of not only getting out on the ice and back again safely, but also for chasing down schools of winter walleye as well. A lot of people ask me about putting tracks on their UTVs and on their ATVs. And I think the reason they ask me those questions is because I've had tracks for many years. A tracked machine can go through almost anything. They're great for frozen lakes. They go through a lot of snow. If there's any uh, fallback or any detriment to a track, it's a, if your lake has a lot of slush on top. If the slush is deep enough that it'll hang up on the frame, that becomes an issue. About the only vehicle that will traverse a lake situation like that is a snowmobile, and even sometimes they struggle. If you're going to set your machine up, consider putting a full cab on it. It's 25 below wind chill right now. The cabs really help if you want to stay mobile while you're ice fishing. But if you put a cab on, get a heater. And if you get a heater, get windshield wipers because you're invariably going to be out in a blizzard or in snowy conditions. And if you don't have the wipers, those windshields will freeze up and you won't be able to see where you're going. So take a look at this machine. This is like an ultimate ice setup. Uh, tracks, cab, heater, the whole works, and you'll be able to stay mobile, warm, and ice fish almost in any condition you want. Ooh, on the dead stick here. There's one. Oh, he's a pretty good one too, I think. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's just always good to have that dead stick over there, just in case. This is going to be a nice walleye, I think, here. Where are you at, buddy? Where are you at? Oh yeah, good walleye. Good walleye. He's a decent one here. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. <laughs> oh, I mean, that right there, definitely not a lake of the woods giant, but that is a nice walleye anywhere we go. Oh man. And honestly, it's early ice. It is just brutally cold. 
and it just kind of shows you even if you have the right equipment to get out here to make sure you stay warm you can come out and have a lot of fun so let's get this bad boy unhooked and keep her going <laughs> We're gonna get him back. He's cold. <laughs> Got a fun up here at Lake of the Woods. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So to say Keith Cavias' reputation, he's a little bit reckless. I've seen some stuff on open water before, but I don't think anything takes the cake as much as ice fishing with Keith or broken snowmobiles, broken four-wheelers, power heads on augers lost. I'm guessing he's probably broke at least three or four rods today too. Uh, lit the same heater on fire twice. Heard he worked on his field goal kicking on it. Not a good deal. <laughs> Fish down there. Here he is. Are you kidding me? Broke halfway up. Said to take a break. Oh, ooh. what do you got? I didn't even see anything on your graph. That's a little square. What is oh, that? It's, it's, a <laughs> it's a baby sturge. I wasn't expecting to see that. That thing is so awesome. They Look are so it. awesome when they're little. Unhook that thing and get them back. He's just a baby, GP. Just a baby. <laughs> The next bite would like to thank Adrian's Resort. Adrian's Resort is located on the Rainy River near Lake of the Woods and offers well-maintained plowed roads on the ice and easy to access heated fish houses. After your fishing trip, relax in a cabin with all the comforts of home and enjoy a full bar with delicious food items in a spacious lodge. A great place to share fishing tales with friends and family. For more information on Adrian's Resort, please call 218-634-1985.